Hi, welcome to the Knowledge Hack and the history of the atomic bomb. It's the height of World War II. The Nazis and the United States are locked in a race against time to develop the atomic bomb. The stakes couldn't be higher. The outcome of this race could shake the course of history. But let's rewind a second and understand what is an atomic bomb and how does it work? An atomic bomb is a powerful weapon that derives its destructive force from the release of nuclear energy. At its core, an atomic bomb involves the process of nuclear fission, where the nucleus of an atom is split, releasing an enormous amount of energy. This realization came from the work of brilliant scientists like Albert Einstein, who laid the theoretical groundwork for harnessing this immense power. Einstein's theory of relativity includes the famous equation E equals mc squared. This equation states that energy is equal to mass multiplied by the speed of light squared. In nuclear fission, the nucleus of an atom is split into two smaller nuclei. When this happens, a tiny amount of mass is converted into an enormous amount of energy. This release of energy is in accordance with Einstein's equation, where a small amount of mass is multiplied by the square of the speed of light to produce a large amount of energy. The splitting of atomic nuclei, known as nuclear fission, occurs through a process involving the bombardment of the nucleus with a neutron. When a neutron collides with a nucleus, it can cause the nucleus to become unstable and eventually split into two smaller nuclei. During nuclear fission, the nucleus absorbs the neutron, becoming highly unstable. This instability causes the nucleus to stretch and deform. The repulsive forces between the protons within the nucleus overcome the strong nuclear force that holds the nucleus together, resulting in the nucleus breaking apart. As the nucleus splits, it releases a significant amount of energy along with additional neutrons. These released neutrons can go on to collide with other nuclei nearby, causing a chain reaction. If the chain reaction is controlled, such as in a nuclear power plant, it can be used to generate electricity. If the chain reaction is uncontrolled, as in an atomic bomb, it leads to a rapid and explosive release of energy. Both the Nazis and the Americans were aware of the theory and were locked in a head-to-head -head race to get this done before the other, as whoever would get the bomb first would be master of the world. The US took this task seriously and invested enormous resources to get the bomb first, and they created the top-secret Manhattan Project. Just imagine if the Nazis would have got the wolf bomb first we might have been still under the Third Reich. The Manhattan Project began in 1939 following the realization that Germany might be working on atomic bomb development. The project brought together an unprecedented number of scientists, engineers and military personnel from various disciplines. Under the leadership of physicist J. Robert Oppenheimer, the project's main scientific laboratory was established in Los Alamos, New Mexico. Los Alamos became the primary site for research, design, and construction of the atomic bomb. The project faced significant challenges, including limited resources, time constraints, and the need for immense scientific breakthroughs. One of the major obstacles was the successful enrichment of uranium-235 along with the production of plutonium-239, both fissile materials required for nuclear weapons. Overcoming huge odds, the scientists made lots of progress and were getting ready to test this incredible invention. However, there was concerns among scientists involved in the Manhattan Project that the chain reaction in this nuclear explosion could become unstoppable, leading to a catastrophic event where the entire world would be destroyed. This fear stemmed from uncertainty surrounding the behavior of a nuclear chain reaction on such a large scale. However, they moved forward. The Manhattan Project achieved its primary goal on July 16, 1945. 
with the successful testing of the first atomic bomb. Codenamed Trinity, the test took place in the desert of New Mexico and demonstrated the immense destructive power of the atomic bomb. The estimated yield of the Trinity test was about 20 kilotons of TNT, which means it released the equivalent energy of 20,000 tons of conventional explosives. The explosion created a massive fireball that reached temperatures of tens of millions of degrees Celsius, with a mushroom cloud rising to an altitude of over 7 miles. The test was a huge success and the beginning of the nuclear era. Less than a month after the Trinity test, the United States dropped atomic bombs on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in August of 1945. The first one, codenamed Little Boy, was dropped in Hiroshima on August 6, 1945. At around 8.15 a.m. local time, the Enola Gay, a B-29 bomber, released Little Boy over Hiroshima. The bomb was dropped from an altitude of approximately 31,000 feet and detonated at an altitude of about 1,900 feet above the city. The detonation of Little Boy resulted in a massive explosion, equivalent to 150,000 tons of TNT. The blast instantly killed tens of thousands of people and destroyed a significant portion of the city. The heat and intense energy released by the bomb caused widespread fires and inflicted severe burns on the survivors. The force of the explosion also generated a powerful shockwave that caused additional destruction. The immediate impact of the bomb was catastrophic, resulting in the death of an estimated 70 to 80,000 people. The final death toll, including those who died from radiation sickness and injuries sustained in the following weeks and months, is estimated to have reached approximately 140,000 people. On August 9, 1945, the boxcar, a B-29 bomber piloted by Major Charles Sweeney, took off from the Northfield Air Base in the island of Tinian. The primary target for the bombing was the city of Kokura, but due to poor visibility, the boxcar diverted to a secondary target, Nagasaki. At approximately 11.02 a.m. local time, the bomb, codenamed Fat Man, was released over Nagasaki. It detonated at an altitude of about 1,650 feet above the city. Unlike Little Boy, Fat Man was an implosion-type plutonium bomb. The explosion caused by Fat Man was devastating, with a force equivalent to 21,000 tons of TNT. The blast resulted in the immediate death of tens of thousands of people and caused widespread destruction. The heat and chocolate from this explosion caused buildings to collapse, fires to spread and inflicted severe injuries on survivors. The estimated death toll from the bombing of Nagasaki is approximately 35 to 40,000 people. The long-term effects of radiation exposure led to additional death from radiation sickness and increased cancer risk among survivors. These bombings ultimately led to Japan's surrender, effectively ending World War II. With the Nazis defeated, surely the nuke's arms race was over, you say. But actually, that was not the case at all. The nuclear arms race was just getting started. After World War II, a new era emerged, characterized by the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union. This period witnessed an intense arms race between the two superpowers, including the development and proliferation of atomic bombs and the subsequent advancements in nuclear weapons technology. Following the successful creation of atomic bombs by the United States during the Manhattan Project, the Soviet Union accelerated its own nuclear weapons program. In 1949, the Soviet Union conducted its first successful atomic bomb test, ending the American monopoly on nuclear weapons. This development set off a competitive race between the two nations to expand and improve their nuclear arsenals. Both countries thought to increase their stockpiles, enhance the destructive power of their weapons, and develop advanced delivery systems. The arms race during this time was fueled by the concept of deterrence, 
The United States and the Soviet Union believed that possessing a substantial nuclear arsenal would deter the other side from initiating a nuclear attack, as the devastating consequences would outweigh any potential gains. This led to the doctrine of mutual assured destruction, MAD, M-A-D, which implied that any nuclear attack on either side would result in catastrophic retaliation, essentially deterring both nations from launching an attack. MAD aimed to maintain a delicate balance of power and prevent the outbreak of a full-scale nuclear war. Both the United States and the Soviet Union continuously developed and tested new types of nuclear weapons. They pursued advancements such as the hydrogen bombs, thermonuclear weapons which utilized fusion reactions rather than fission and were significantly more powerful than the atomic bombs based on fission reactions. The most powerful hydrogen bomb tested was the Soviet Union's Tsar Bomba, detonated in 1961 with an estimated yield of 50 million tons of TNT, 2,380 times more powerful than the Fat Man bomb that destroyed Nagasaki and killed 40,000 units. But the new craze was not only about developing larger nukes, but also smaller atomic weapons. In fact, they were developing atomic weapons so small they can fit into a backpack or suitcase and be carried by an individual but with a destructive force equivalent to several thousand tons of TNT at a minimum. Other forms of nukes were created such as nuclear artillery. Both the United States and the Soviet Union developed and deployed nuclear artillery during the Cold War. These were large caliber guns or howitzers capable of firing nuclear shells or projectiles to deliver a nuclear explosion over a short distance. Atomic Demolition Munitions ADMs were compact nuclear devices developed by the United States for use by specialized military units. They were designed for tactical purposes such as demolishing enemy infrastructure or creating barriers. ADMs were typically delivered by military personnel and were not intended for widespread deployment. The arms race and deterrence strategy also involved the development of various delivery systems. These included long-range intercontinental ballistic missiles, or ICBMs, capable of reaching targets on the other side of the globe, strategic bombers capable of carrying nuclear payloads, and nuclear-armed submarines, SSBMs, lurking beneath the oceans, close to enemy territory, and ready to strike with complete surprise at any time. The arms race between the United States and the Soviet Union escalated tensions and created a significant global security dilemma. The constant fear of catastrophic nuclear conflict remained a prominent future of the Cold Area. Over time, both countries accumulated massive nuclear arsenals capable of destroying the world several times over. The realization of the devastating potential of nuclear weapons and the understanding that their use would have catastrophic consequences led to international efforts to reduce nuclear stockpiles and promote arms control and disarmament. So where do we stand today? As of now, nine countries are known to possess nuclear weapons. The United States, Russia, United Kingdom, France, China, India, Pakistan, Israel, and North Korea. It's estimated that there are approximately 13,000 nuclear warheads in existence enough to destroy our planet many times over, but paradoxically, might also be the deterrence that keeps the planet alive. There are other uses for nuclear energy, however, mainly to produce emission-free power. Nuclear power plants generate electricity on a large scale. They produce a significant amount of baseload power, meaning they could provide a stable and continuous supply of electricity. Nuclear energy can help meet the energy demands of communities, industries, and cities, reducing dependence on fossil fuels and decreasing greenhouse gas emissions. The most exciting new program at the moment is nuclear power plants powered by nuclear fusion rather than fission. In fusion, rather than split the nuclei, immense heat and pressure are used to combine two nuclei. This will one day allow the possibility of safe, smaller and extremely powerful power plants that power entire countries with no nuclear waste and no rare isotopes like uranium and plutonium. 
That's it for today folks. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe to this channel and please comment below as we love reading your comments.